Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Stan Rio. Welcome to Top 10 Reasons Why You Should Try Final Fantasy XIV Online. I recently made a similar video about Guild Wars 2 and Elder Scrolls Online, and those videos did pretty well. You guys really enjoyed those videos. And I thought, you know what? There's another MMO out there that I'm playing that really deserves a similar spotlight, and that is Final Fantasy XIV. And the reason I have top 10 reasons is because well, honestly, it just, it just so many things I love about this game, even though I've recently discovered, compared to, let's say, ESO and Guild Wars 2, uh, Final Fantasy XIV, for me personally, is a new MMO that I'm trying out, and I absolutely love it. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with number 10. It's a Final Fantasy game in an MMO fashion, in an MMO version, and that is honestly a selling point for me. I've never gotten into Final Fantasy, honestly, probably because I wasn't exposed to it early on. I was born in Russia, and I grew up in Russia for most of my years, or at least half of my life. Uh, we didn't really have Final Fantasy titles, or at least I wasn't really exposed to any of them, so I never really got into Final Fantasy. So, you know, I mean, I, I got a lot of catching up to do. I still gotta play Final Fantasy 7, apparently that's incredible. Still gotta play Final Fantasy 10. But still, the selling point for me wasn't the fact that it was a Final Fantasy game, that it was an MMO. And I thought, hey, it's gonna be kinda cool. I mean, I played World of Warcraft, I played Guild Wars 2, I played ESO, I played Star Wars The Old Republic, I played different kinds of MMOs, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna give this game a try. And the thing is, I absolutely fell in love with this game. The fact that this game is an MMO was an absolute selling point for me. So hey, if you're looking for an MMO, uh, or if you're looking for a Final Fantasy game to play, and you would like to see what a Final Fantasy MMO would look like, you definitely might want to try Final Fantasy XIV. This game is absolutely amazing, and in my opinion, it actually crosses the original Final Fantasy RPG feel and an MMO feel to the point where it feels like an MMO, but at the same time feels like the classic Final Fantasy RPG style. I guess it would be called JRPG, I think? Not sure exactly. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and head over to Reason 9, which is Unique World Biomes. In this game, you have three capital cities, New Gridania, Ulda, and Limsona Minsap. Let's say, let's take Ulda. Ulda is a giant deserty place, but at the same time, it's so well made and has such great feel of it. The architecture of the city, the biome, the weather of the city. Ulda is the only place, I believe, that has sandstorms when it comes to, you know, weather effects. Uh, Limsona Minsa has lots of rain and thunders because Limsona Minsa is kind of like floating structures that are also placed partially on cliffs. It's a little city above cliffs, pretty much. <laughs> uh, it's difficult to explain, difficult to tell, but I'll try to show some footage in this point to kind of show off the three biomes. And Limson Aminsa looks like this port city full of pirates and swashbucklers, has a lot of stormy weather, but overall just, just looks gorgeous. It's just landed, the entire city is built on cliffs and floating buildings, and it just looks absolutely gorgeous how and compared to Ulda, just Lumsun and Minsa and Ulda just look completely different from one another, and that's what I love about it. And last but not least, my favorite city so far is the New Gridania, which is an entire city surrounded by lush green forests, and it's one of the most beautiful zones out there. Because as soon as you exit New Gridania, you got forests and little crook and little creeks and rivers and everything. It's a gorgeous and beautiful area and I absolutely love how each three areas, Limson and Minsa, Ulda and Yukudania, feel different from one another and how greatly they vary. That makes traveling in the game a lot more, I guess, adventurous because you'll sometimes get missions to go from green luscious forest to a desert and you know, from the desert over to city on cliffs and a bunch of where storms and port cities rain. It, it's just beautiful and it really adds to the whole feeling of adventure in the game and I absolutely love it. More games need to have varying and unique biomes. Number 8 is character customization. This game has one of my favorite character customization options and features out there, including uh, choosing over race, choosing a sub-race, yes, they actually have sub-races for each race, choosing gender, 
adding a little thing such as hair, face, tattoos, whatever you need to make your character personal and unique, it's right there. The options are plentiful. It even lets you choose a voice out of, I believe, 14 to 16 different voices. I think it's 14 actually. Different voices to add to the game, which is pretty awesome. The variation of voices is pretty great and allows you to really make your character, I guess, un more unique and more personalized. The game goes far and beyond to make sure it even adds a birth system where you can set up a birth date for your character, a zodiac sign, and then set up your class right there. But you can even make the character have the same birthday as your personal birthday, which is something that I did. Although it's going to be kind of corny and cheesy, it does add this personalization to your character, which I absolutely love. Number 7, Personal Quest System. This game has probably one of the, my favorite ways of progressing in the game, which is Story Quests. Story Quests are the best way to have a canon story that every single new character can follow. And you ch and depending on your class, you start off in a city, whether it be Limson and Minsen, Yugredania or Ulda, and then you start off by following your personal story and meeting all these incredibly important characters in the lore, learn more about the lore, learn more about the Calamity, which is a great event that happened in the game, learn more about the past events, and really discover more about the universe of the game, which I absolutely love. Number six, control support, and cross-platform PS3 and PS4. Finally, thank you. Seriously, thank you, Final Fantasy XIV. Thank you so much. You have finally united the PC crowd and the Sony crowd together into an awesome MMO. This game, I gotta say, I have an Xbox 360 controller, which I know it's not a PlayStation controller, but hear me out. Even though I have, a, you know, the rival controller, this game feels so great on a controller that it just translates so well from PC controls and you know regular keyboard and mouse onto the controller that I can see why the Sony people, the Sony players, would love to play this game on a console. Actually, a lot of our free company members, which are pretty much just guilds in the game, are playing currently on PS4s and PS3s. They're playing the game on PS4 and PS3 and they communicate with us and everything. We can on team speak together. And I've tried. I've actually sat down and tried. I got a controller for other games, but I decided to plug it into this game and give it a try, and it feels wonderful, it feels perfect, and it feels like I'm playing an MMO on a, on a console. This is great. I love MMOs that have a perfect transposition from PC to console. ESO is doing it, Final Fantasy has already done it miraculously, and honestly, I don't know why people don't play this game on PS4s. Back in my console days, I've always wanted to play an MMO on a console. And this game plays so well with a controller that I wish it came out on Xbox 360 back in the time when I played that like crazy. Uh, number 5 is free company and player housing. Yes, you can have a free company, which is pretty much a guild. You can have guild housing and you can have player housing. Now, it is expensive, I will say. Player housing and guild housing, or free comp- I guess I should say free company housing for the rest of the video, is expensive. Because, you know, it, it takes a lot of money to rent out a room or rent out a piece of land and actually build your house and, you know, or a free company house. But, I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it's worth it. You just get together with a free company or you make your own, uh, all you guys work together, invest money into the free company. Or you join a free company that already has a real cool player housing and you can even rent your own private quarters in the player house or the free company house. And one of my favorite part is you don't even have to spend real money on it. You can just earn money in-game and spend the money in-game in order to get a piece of land or to buy out a room for your free company, your personal room, and then customize any way you want it. Also, a lot of in-game gold that you just spend on it. I don't think there's a lot of items that you have to spend from the actual like game store of like real money in order to get some personalized things. There's some things I believe like just limited edition things just for customization that you can probably get from there. I'm not fully accustomed and fully uh, I guess known uh, familiar with the I guess Final Fantasy online store but most of the items are most of the little like I guess furniture for your personal quarters or your personal house that you can get you can just buy with a gill which is the currency for the game. Number four, plentiful end game content. Now, I haven't reached max level yet, which is only level 50, 
uh, but I have talked to several other free company members in my free company and I've asked them several things about you know what is that to do for end game content what kind of things you can do and looks like there are plenty of things to do a lot of it requires you know a lot of just PvE content, dungeons, raids, a lot of different world events that you can do, rare mobs to fight for special loot. There's also PvP. Now, in PvP, it's kind of structured, like, you have a dungeon party of a tank, healer, and one melee DPS and one range DPS, versus another tank, healer, melee DPS, and range DPS. Now, it may sound a little odd, and I'm yet to try, but I've looked up some videos on it, and it looks pretty interesting. So bear in mind, if you want to get into Final Fantasy XIV, I would try to focus more on the PvE, like raiding content and dungeon content, rather than the PvP content. Unless you really like the whole, I guess, tank healer trifecta versus another tank heal DPS trifecta. <laughs> Number three, there's plenty to do in the game, especially when you're leveling. This is mostly for the people that are going to be leveling. When you're leveling, you got, you know, your story quests, you got your side quests, you got your class quests, which can get you, you know, new weapons, new gear, special class abilities or profession abilities. You got your hunter's log, which allows you to pretty much hunt down a certain amount of creatures in order to get lots of experience. You got grand company missions and quests that you can do which will allow you to collect seals to earn things like a, you know your first mount your first chocobo or your piece of gear or rank up in the grand company you'll be able to do level meets which is to, which is just repeatable quests that have the kind of the same system of go do this task and you know rinse repeat which is pretty good way to grind you got fate events which are just world events that cap you to a certain level if, especially if you're a high level so that you can kind of you know do these world events with other players of that certain level and you know not just one shoot everything there's just plenty of things to do in the game as well as you know level other professions on the side number two one character to rule them all and what do i mean by that what i mean is you only need one character to master and level and play any profession out there whether it be a combat profession a gathering profession or a crafting profession so yes, if you want to play every single class out there, all you need to do is get make one character. And here's a cool part, let's say you got a Lancer class, you got an Archer class, you got a Thaumaturge, Arcanist, whatever, you got all these combination of classes, but you really like to play a Marauder, which is, I guess, a melee DPS, a heavy melee DPS. Uh, and let's say you like ability A from Pugilist, and you like ability B from Archer, and ability C from Thaumaturge, and whatever. You can actually interchange and cross use some of the abilities from other professions that you've leveled. The professions actually get better and better, and you unlock more of them that you can like cross use onto one class as you progress in all those professions. So let's say you have an Archer level 10, you'll get two or three certain abilities that you can cross use. If your archer is level 30, you get more abilities you can cross use. Level 50, you can get even more abilities you can cross use. It's really cool and intricate system and it allows you to pretty much explore every class out there and choose the one you like. And let's say you want to create a combination of three classes. This game has something called jobs, which is a combination of three professions. Let's say you want to be a bard. In order to enter the jobs, you will need to make sure that the primary profession for that job is level 30, the secondary is level 15, and I believe the third one is maybe level 5, or maybe just hat doesn't really require a level. I don't know, I'm still exploring jobs, but from the research that I've done, all you need to do is have three uh, professions, one primary, one secondary, and one, I guess, tertiary, and then you combine them together to create a powerful crossbreed between all three classes. It will limit you from using other cross abilities from other professions other than the ones that are already locked into that one job but gives you a very unique class to play so you can play as stuff like the white mage which is a healer a black mage a powerful dps a warrior who is a tank and sort of like an off tank a paladin a bard a monk a ninja all kinds of cool class combinations and you only need one character for all of it only one character and last but not least, and probably one of the most important and most exciting reasons why you should try Final Fantasy XIV Online is the Heaven's Ward expansion for Final Fantasy XIV Online dropping on sale June 23rd, 2015. If you want to check out any of the information about the expansion, I'll leave the links below. But I got the website pulled up with me right now and let's go over briefly of what kind of things you got. You have a brand new story that you'll be able to follow for the main campaign. You have a lot of new key characters being added to, I guess, the arsenal, to the people that you'll get to know. Characters are important to stories, by the way. 
you also have three new jobs, the Dark Knight, which is apparently a tank, and Astrologian, which will use, I guess, cosmic magic, and the Machinist, oh, a Machinist, I think? Machinist, which will be pretty much like an engineer of Final Fantasy. You have a brand new race called Aura, with two subclasses, Ran and Xyla, and you'll be able, and if you want to, you have new locations such as Ishgard, Dravania, and Abalathia, which look absolutely gorgeous on the images. You have more new beasts and new creatures and new beastmen. You have new primals and beastmen to explore and fight and possibly interact with. And last but not the level cap will be upgraded to level 60 from level, from level 50 to level 60. So that's pretty revel so that's gonna be something pretty big. And last but not least, Final Fantasy 14 will get flying mounts. And I am very much looking forward to it. They decided to add flying mounts because they're adding different zones where the land is going to be kind of broken apart and shattered and will require players to actually fly over from one little area to the other in order to continue a personal quest or a story quest or be able to even travel around those new zones. And I am so glad Final Fantasy is putting in flying mounts because I am one of those people that used to play this one game, this one game that had flying for the longest time and recently they decided to take it out. So now, I really miss flying, and I think I'm gonna be playing Final Fantasy for flying. I'm looking at you, World of Warcraft. Yeah, I see you. You go take away my flying from from Warlords of Draenor. I'm going to Final Fantasy. Goodbye. All jokes aside, the expansion looks absolutely beautiful and great and amazing. If you want to see more information about it, make sure to click the links below. If you want to play an immersive MMO that just looks gorgeous and feels great, you gotta try this game, especially if you're a console player. Please, get this game on PS4, you will do yourself a favor. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and go, I hope you enjoyed the video, hope this will make you at least consider playing this game. My name is Samriel, like, subscribe, and as always, have a great day, see ya!